Hello everyone, welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how I go from this to this using products that I recently purchased from Sephora and Ulta. Some of the products were purchased during the recent Sephora Spring VIB sale and some others were from a recent Ulta haul. So I've got some high-end products in here and some drugstore priced products in here. So I hope you will enjoy watching me test out these products for the very first time. So without any further ado, let's get started. I already have my foundation on because believe it or not, even though I don't look very dark, I did use a new self tanner last night. But while I didn't get as much color as I had hoped from the self tanner, which I'll be talking about momentarily, it is darker than my face. So I did have to use one of my darker toned foundations. So I used Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 3N1. All right, so even though this video is titled Testing New Makeup, I do wanna talk about this tanner, which I guess some would consider makeup. I don't know. Regardless, I used it and I feel compelled to share with you the results because this self tanner is so highly reviewed and raved about on Ulta.com. I felt like I had to try it. This is the Saint Tropez Ashley Graham Ultimate Glow Self Tan Luxe Whipped Cream Mousse with Limited Edition Mint. So this is what it looks like. And then this is the cute mint. Now, a lot of people did not watch, which is okay. I know not everybody's interested in body care, but I did recently put up a video about getting my, how I get my body ready for summer, spring and summer. Not like with diet and exercise. The video was more about shaving and self tanning. Anyway, in that video, I used and raved about the Saint Tropez Advanced One Hour Tan Bronzing Mousse. And I do have the mitt. I don't know why I didn't bring it in here. It's the same thing, only it's just a different color. And I love this. I don't believe that you get a medium tan in two hours or even a dark tan in three hours, but if you leave this on overnight, you are going to be very dark. If you don't want to be very dark and you just want a light tan, then I would recommend this one. Personally, I'm torn because I love the formula of this. When I was actually at Ulta, I asked the sales associate, what's the difference between the two? I told her I already have this one, I love it. Why is this one you know, so much better? What's the difference? And she said that the formula was thicker, the mousse was much thicker, it was much more luxe, much less runny than this one. So I thought, all right, I'll give it a try. So I used this last night after exfoliating my skin in the shower and it did go on beautifully. The formula is truly much thicker and much more luxe than the advanced one hour tan. So I did like that. I also really like how when you apply this, it's like you are airbrushing on a tan. It is tinted and it's this beautiful bronzy golden color. And I got really excited. I thought, Ooh, this is going to be so good. The reviews are right. This is amazing. And then when I woke up this morning and showered, I barely looked like I had a tan. Personally, I'm gonna stick with this formula. But again, if you prefer a lighter tan, and honestly one that smells better, I would go for this one, the Ashley Graham. So yeah, I thought some of you would be interested in hearing about that, and it was part of my Ulta haul. But now let's move on to makeup. So I will zoom you in. Now, as I mentioned, I do have foundation and concealer on, but I have not powdered because I do have a new to me powder that I'm going to use. But first, I'm gonna start off with a new to me contour product. I've really been wanting to try out the Westman Atelier brand. And I follow this makeup artist um, named Monica Blunder. I'm sure many of you have heard of her. She was a huge celebrity makeup artist in the 90s and early 2000s. And she does have a YouTube channel, by the way. You know what, now that I think about it, I'm not even certain that it was Monica Blunder that I heard talk about this. Anyway, whoever it was mentioned that it was such a good tone for contour because it didn't have any golden undertones to it. It was more ashy. So I am going to apply it here. It's definitely lighter than the contour I usually use and definitely a lot 
less golden. This is where I realize how uneven my face is. My cheeks are so uneven. I'm gonna put a little here and here, and a little bit down the sides of my nose. I love the packaging. This is, the top is magnetic, so it just clicks right on. And I'm gonna use my favorite contouring brush. This is from It Cosmetics. It's the Heavenly Luxe Complexion Perfection Number no. Seven brush. And I use the wide side to blend out. I do like the tone. This definitely would be a good choice for someone who does not like to use warm tones for their contour. I like it, it's natural looking. This is a very nice contour. Oh, by the way, the concealer I used today is from Jouer. All of the products will be listed and linked in the description box, including the foundation and concealer. And my new necklace that I am in love with. Okay, next up are brows. I am going to be using this new Charlotte Tilbury brow cheat. I was sent, well, I purchased the shade Soft Brown I was sent taupe in PR. I was sent all of the new brow products. I did try both of these. So I guess I sort of lied when I said that I would be trying everything for the first time. Okay, I'm trying everything for the first time but this. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty sure you will all forgive me because I know many of you want to see this product in action. And I'm gonna use the taupe today. And the reason why I wanted to use this in this video, because honestly, I don't even remember trying it. I've tried so many new brow products lately I can't keep them all straight, which ones I like and which ones I don't. I have to say I do really like the fine angled point on this because I can really mimic the look of hairs towards the front of my brow where I don't have any. A lot of people asked me in a recent video where I talked about having had microblading done about four or five years ago and why that didn't quite work out for me. Um, the answer is because for me, the microblading basically permanently damaged my hair follicle. So I don't have any brow growth right here in the front, nothing. I really like the shade. I have been having good luck with brow shades recently. Normally when I'm done applying my brow color, I will use the spoolie side again and brush through my brows. But instead, I am trying out this Eyes Up Here set from e.l.f. that's in collaboration with the hairstylist Jen Atkin, who, if you don't know, is a celebrity hairdresser and she created the hair care line Way, O-U-A-I. So in this set, you get an eye pencil. This is the Zero Effort Liner, and this is a black shade, so I will be using that. And this comes with a tiny brow spoolie and then a little angled brush on the end. But I'm a bit confused. This also has like a little, not a spoolie, but a brush applicator. But maybe this is for the hair, like for doing this. Ooh, I see. Okay, oh, I like this. I used to have a product by John Frieda, a Frizzies product. I actually think I have one in my bathroom drawer that did exactly this. Just kind of takes those baby hairs down. Can you can even see, I don't know if I was in the frame when I did that, but it really does work. Does this go in here? Does this fit in? Oh, sort of. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> this is what testing new makeup is all about, right? Whether it be a success or a fail. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> I think I did this wrong. Well, I did just wash my hair, so I guess it wouldn't be a bad thing to like apply the pomade with this. And then, I don't need this then. Oh, I'm so confused. Maybe there was a video I should have watched before attempting this. It really lightened up my brow though. Hmm. Yeah, you don't get a lot of product out with this, at least for the brows. For the baby hairs, it's okay. I wish this actually fit into the container to use this for the brows and then this for the hairs. 
I'll keep playing around with this and give you an update in my monthly favorites and fails video. So moving on, I purchased from Ulta this Buxom Tiki Bar Eye and Cheek Palette. I think this palette is so cute and I do believe that Buxom eyeshadows are very underrated. So I think I'm gonna use everything in here but the blush because I do have another separate blush that I want to test out from e.l.f. So what do I want to do? I really wanna try this shade right here called Throwing Shade. I'm going to attempt to apply it dry just to see how much pigment I get from it. By the way, I did already apply a little eyeshadow primer. I used the Urban Decay Primer Potion. You almost can't tell it's green. It looks like a charcoal color with a hint of green. I wanna try it with a damp brush. Oh yeah, you definitely see more of the green and you see more of the sparkle when it's used damp. All right, I think I'm gonna just keep going with this eye to make sure that I like it and then do the other eye off camera, but we will go step by step together on this eye. So we've just applied that shade, throwing shade. I prefer it damp. And now using a blending brush, this is a Sigma Tapered Blending E40. I'm gonna go into this shade right here called Tan Lines. And I'm gonna take that and run that over the top of Throwing Shade. Hmm. Well, 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 you know what that just did, which I don't like, is that it totally got rid of the color on the lid. Mm. Mm -mm. No, 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 that's not good. But we're gonna fix it, we are gonna fix it. I'm gonna take a brush and go back in. I'm gonna add more, this is just dry, and I'm going to add more and then blend out that crease. So maybe in this instance, it would have been better to do the crease color first. Yeah, this is, this is not working out so well the way I've done this. I don't know if it's the shadow formula or what, but yeah, I'm not happy at all so far. Adding a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna use my finger and I'm gonna go into the shade Coconuts. I'm just gonna use my finger and we're gonna put that on the center of the lid and see what happens. Okay, that's pretty. That kind of, ooh, ooh, that might fix our problems. I say our problems, my problems. <gasps> Not your problem, mine. I just don't like how this doesn't look very blended. I'm gonna take this little tiny crease brush. And I'm gonna go in with the shade Sippin' right here. And I'm gonna see if I can use that to blend out what's going on here. Okay, there we go. I think that's making things look better. I'm still not wild about the way this is looking, but I'm gonna go do the same thing on the other eye and come right back. Now I'm going to use that Jen Atkin e.l.f. pencil to line my upper lash lines, hopefully staying in the frame. I'm gonna do a winged liner today. Ooh, it's very creamy. It's very creamy. I'm gonna go right up to the lash line. I couldn't get a real fine line, at least on the wing with this pencil, but I like that it's easy to blend out. And this brush is a BK Beauty 208.
All right, we're kind of dramatic here, but I don't hate it. <laughs> I definitely think adding the liner made the shadow look better. Now that I have something pretty bold going on on the upper lash lines, I think I wanna do just something very subtle on the lower lash line. I think I'll take this pinky shade called Burning Up and I'll apply that using a BK Beauty 204 right underneath the lash line, just for a soft smokiness and pop of color. And in doing that, I just decided that I wanna run a little bit of that same shade through my crease as well. Just to tie it all together. Did I already say that? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm tying the look together. I'm using the same brush that I used for sipping. I'm putting my chin up so I can see the entire area that I wanna work with. I'm just blending out. I wish this palette had an ivory shade to pop underneath the brow because I feel like I need a little lightness right under here. I'm just gonna take this ivory shade from the Morphe Madison Beer palette and pop that right under here. All right, now I'm gonna curl my lashes and I am going to use this e.l.f. Jen Atkin pencil to tight line just the top. Ew, this is my Revlon. Yeah, this eyelash curler is really, really bad. So I'm switching over to my Kevin O'Quan. So I gotta tell you, the eyeliner is already fading. Can you tell how light it's gotten in just a few minutes? Oh my goodness. This is such a bummer. I'm gonna have to go back and add more. It seemed so promising at first, didn't it? Well, I'm excited to try this next e.l.f. product. A lot of people have raved about this. This is the Putty Blush. I purchased the shade Turks and Caicos. It's like a peachy color. Oh, by the way, the mascara I used, um, I didn't really have a new one to try. I recently was sent the um, Benefit Magnet Mascara. I'll put the correct name up on the screen. And I did not like that at all. So I just used my go-to NARS Climax. I don't know if you're supposed to put this on with your fingers or with a brush. I'm just gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna put it right on the high points of my cheeks. Hmm. It's not really that pigmented, but I guess that's good for a natural everyday look or someone who has fair skin. I'll say that it is a far cry from when I was testing out the new um, Melt Makeup Cream Blushes and the new Hourglass. This is definitely a lot more sheer. Yeah, I like a lot of blush. I'm a blush girl, so this is probably not going to be something I personally reach for a lot. Maybe I will try a brush. Let's see if that helps. Oh, it does actually. See? Makeup is all about experimentation. You gotta try different application methods and brushes. Now I think we can move on to setting the face. I purchased a mini size of the one size loose powder, translucent. I saw one of my um, favorite makeup artists, YouTubers, painted by Spencer, use this powder in a lot of his videos or several of his videos and he was raving about it. And I absolutely love trying new powders. So I bought the mini from Sephora. And again, this is translucent. And he actually says this is a good, um, Spencer does. He says that this is a good powder for baking under the eyes, even when you have mature skin. Now I'm not gonna bake, which means I'm not gonna pack on the powder under the eyes and just leave it there, but I will 
take this elf sponge and pack it on and then brush it away <laughs> pretty quickly. Hmm. It does give a nice brightening to the eyes, but did it make it look a little dry? I don't know. Now I'm going to use the brush just for the T-zone. It does have a bit of a blurring effect to it, which I like. I think like with most powders and mature skin, just using a light dusting is better. And now I want to try the highlighter from this Buxom palette. It's called Golden Hour. That's pretty. Okay. This I like. I'm not wowed, but it's nice. And I do want to put a little bit of it in my tear ducts. Ooh, it's a good, it's a good tear duct brightener. And I'm popping a little bit under the arch of my brow as well, just right at the arch. Now in my Sephora Spring VIB Sale haul, I swatched all four of my new Huda Beauty cream lipsticks, but I only wore one in the video and I showed a photo of another. And I think those were Buttercup and Honey Bun. But today I want to use one of the pinker ones. I have not worn either of these on my actual lips yet. Sweet Cheeks and Angel. By the way, these are called the Huda Beauty Power Bullet Cream Glow Hydrating Lipsticks. So I'm gonna use Angel. Pretty color, very pretty. I love how these feel. I do want to use a little lip liner though, so I have this Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Crayon in Alona just sitting here, so I'm going to use this. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video that I was not going to use this blush shade from the palette, but I feel like I have to, just to let you know if this entire palette is like just meh, or if it's a dud, or if it's worth be trying it again. Go into Seychelles. And oh. Yeah, I like that better. This putty blush was just not enough for a blush lover like me. And I feel like this is tying the whole look together. So a couple of weeks ago, Ardell sent me this huge box of lashes. I've used several of them already, so this isn't even all that was in here. This is about half of what was originally in here. So I think I'm going to try a pair of lashes that I have not tried before, but I am going to keep it natural. I know most of my viewers like a natural lash, and I do too. I think I'm going to try these. These are really natural looking. They are the Faux Mink 817s. Overall, I really like the way this look turned out, but as you saw, it was a bit of a struggle to get to this point. I do love these lashes, by the way, these Foam Mink 817s. If you already have really nice long lashes, these probably won't be enough for you, but if you have tiny, sparse lashes like mine, even with mascara on, and you want something natural, this is a, a really good option. So now let's talk about the products I used. The Buxom Tiki Bar Eye and Cheek Palette. It's just okay. It's not great. It's not something that I would recommend you run out and purchase, that's for sure. The e.l.f. Putty Blush, as I said earlier, is good for a natural look. It's not going to be something that I reach for a lot. There are a lot of other better cream blushes on the market, even at this price point. Well, Milani's a little bit more expensive, but they did come out with some new cream blushes that are excellent. But that said, if you like something that just has a little bit of color that doesn't automatically give you such a punch of color, then this might be a good option for you. The powder, the one size powder was very, very nice. Is it better than any of my other favorite powders like the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder or even um, my recent discovery of the um, Wet n Wild Halo loose powder, no, it's not better than 
any of the other powders I've recently talked about in videos. The Westman Atelier Contour Stick. It's nice. If you need a cool tone contour product, then I would recommend it. As for the Jen Atkin products, um, the eye pencil I thought was going to be great, but it turns out that it's just sort of meh. This brow and hair tamer I think is great for hair taming the baby hairs on my head, but I don't think I'll be reaching for this as far as uh, setting my brow hairs. I have a lot of other products like the Patrick Ta or the um, new Charlotte Tilbury Brow Fix or the Brow Freeze from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Yes, those are all more expensive than this, but I would honestly just use soap or the Got To Be hair gel that I've talked about in the past. That's great for setting the brows and giving a fluffier brow look. I do like the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Pencil. It's another product that doesn't necessarily wow me, but it's very good. Actually, I can't say that anything here really wowed me. I do love this lip combo, the um, Huda Beauty lipstick with the Natasha Denona liner. If you would like to see all four of the Huda Beauty hydrating glow lipsticks that I purchased, if you wanna see swatches, then I would recommend you take a look at my Sephora VIB sale haul video if you haven't, because I do have swatches of all four shades in that video and photos of me wearing the two other shades. So yeah, I think that is it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And as always, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I also really appreciate it. I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do try to upload new videos at least two to three times per week. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under the same username. It's all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you so, so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.